Check out this crazy looking expression. I'm going to show you how to use it from start to finish to create your own scalable, resizable animation effects which sit on your edit page and you can just drop onto whatever you like. Now, there's loads of different uses for this, but the example we're going to use is this. Now, you may have seen this in my magic animation tool, and this is actually the secret source that makes all of that work. If you did miss my magic animation tool, click up here to go check it out. And talking of secret source, this video is sponsored by Squarespace, but more on those in a short while. Now for this video, I'm not actually going to explain in detail what that expression does or how it works, because that kind of needs its own video. But instead, I'm just going to show you how to use it, how to combine it with the anim curves to create these reusable effects. Now you don't need to remember it, the expression plus another one is down in the description below. Now this will work under DaVinci Resolve 17, DaVinci Resolve 18, as well as the free and studio versions. So let's open it up and take a look. So here we are on the edit page of DaVinci Resolve. Now, all you need to do, grab a PNG. If you want to follow along, drop it on your timeline like so. So I'm just going to use this logo and then we're going to right click and we're going to open in the Fusion page. Now for this one, we're just going to do that zoom effect. So all we need is our transform node. So make sure you've got your nodes open down here. If you don't see those, just click on nodes up here in the top left to open those up. From this little menu bar right in the middle, you want this one, this is your transform node. Just drag that onto your line and release so it's in there like so. Give it a click. In the inspector, you've got all of your transform options within here. Now, you can actually apply the same thing to anything as mentioned, but we're just going to stick with the size attribute for this video. So size obviously makes this smaller and bigger like so. Now, this is where we start to use our anim curves. So what we need to do, simply right click on the word size, go to modify with, and then the top option is anim curves. Give that a click. And by default, what this will simply do is go from zero to five. So as we can see, size at the very end of our clip is at five, whereas the very beginning, it's at zero. And if we hit play, it's just gonna animate through like so. Now, if you stick on the Fusion page, I'm just gonna hop onto the edit page a second for a quick demo. You'll notice that this is always going zero to five. And if I make this longer, it's still gonna go zero to five. This is the joy of anim curves. It'll just rescale it, so no matter how long your composition is, the actual animation will be the same. It'll always go from zero to five. This is why anim curves are so cool. So let me hop back into the Fusion page. To modify the anim curves, which we obviously need to do, in the inspector, at the very top, you've got modifiers. Give that a click. And then you've got these anim curves on transform one. Now for this video, we're not gonna go through every single thing within the anim curves. I have talked about anim curves in slightly more detail in the past when I actually made a transitions video showing you how to use anim curves for that. That's linked up above and down in the description if you wanna go check that one out. But we're gonna stick with the, the core stuff, the core stuff that you need to really make this process work. Now you want to start off in the middle here where you've got scaling and you've got scale and it says five at the moment. Now what this is doing is telling the anim curves how much you want the attribute to be changed. So if we were to change this to two, our animation would now simply go from zero to two. So this would get two times bigger, zero to two. We actually want this to be one because we want it to start at zero and then end at one. So it basically goes from not existing and just flies in and then stops like so. Underneath that, you've got the offset. Now the offset is worth knowing because what this does basically sets the start point. So if I change offset to one, for example, it's now gonna start at one and then end at the what would be two. So if I go back to tools, you can see size is two. It starts off at one because our offset is set to one and our scale is set to one, combine them, you get two. For this example, we want zero and we want one, so it just flies in like so. Now we're not gonna talk about the time scale or the clips because you're not gonna use those for this example. Above that, you've got curve shape. Now this is another reason why the anim curves are so cool. Now this at the moment is just going from zero to one in a straight line, it's linear. So there's no acceleration, it's just slowly coming in like so, there's no curve to the animation. Anim curves allow you to add curves. So the curve option here is currently set to linear. If we just change the drop down to easing, we then get these in and out options. Now this one on the left, this refers to the first half of your animation. So this bit essentially. And the second one, this one on the right over here, refers to the second half of your animation, the out. Now what I recommend you do with these curves, 
Just play with them, five minutes, go through each one, just have a little look. They're all the same thing, they're all just different curves, they just accelerate and slow down in different parts. As a rule of thumb, they get sort of more aggressive as you go further down the list. But yeah, have a play with them, see what works for you. I'm a sucker for just going to Expo. It's quite a quick, aggressive one, but it kind of works. So I'm just gonna stick it on Expo for this default. You can see it's quite quick in the middle, but then it has a really mellow sort of end to it. So we're gonna go with something like that. But as mentioned, feel free to have a play and see what works best for you. Now, the last thing I need to show you here before we have a look at this expression is this mirror tick box. If I give that a tick, what it's gonna do, rather than going from zero to one, as it was before, it's gonna go from zero to one right in the middle, and then it's gonna go from one back to zero. We've just mirrored the entire thing, but rather than just mirroring it, we've actually sort of condensed it. So as you can see, the animation is much quicker because it's only needing to go to one in the middle rather than going to one at the end. And if we hit play, it's just gonna pop in and then pop straight back out. Now again, because it's an anim curve, we could make this as long or as short as we like, and it's just gonna fly in and then fly straight back out, which if that's what you want, that's a really nice, simple way of doing that. Pop in and pop out animation. But we want ours to actually pop in in the first sort of second, then hold itself and then pop out at the end. So we need to start customizing it just a little bit more. I'm gonna jump back onto the Fusion page right here. So this is now when we start to use our expression. A real quick message from this video sponsor, Squarespace. In today's world, pretty much anyone needs a website. Whether you're looking to start your own business or an online store, you're looking for somewhere to put your portfolio, or maybe you just wanna start writing a blog. Squarespace has everything you need. They've got loads of really awesome templates that are doddled to customize, plus there's all the other tools that you'll need, like analytics, SEO tools, online stores, email marketing, members areas, blogs, and now even scheduling tools. Meaning you've got everything you need in one place. How handy is that? So if you do fancy checking out Squarespace for yourself, simply shoot over to squarespace.com to start your free trial right now. When you're ready to launch, head over to squarespace.com forward slash Mr. Alex Tech to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code Mr. Alex Tech at checkout. Simple. As mentioned, the expression is down below. We're just gonna copy and paste it for now. If you want to know more, you want me to do a really nerdy video where we properly geek out about expressions, let me know, because I'd quite happily do that and bore you to death with it. But let me just copy and paste it now and show you how it works. Now at the very top here, we've got source and it currently says transition because that's the default. We want to change that to custom. And then we get this little input box underneath. Now, if I move from play here, you'll see that actually nothing is happening now. We've got no animation. And that's because the animation is controlled by this input. So this basically controls the anim curve. So you can see I'm moving that and our animation is playing through. Now this simply runs from a zero to one scale. So the animation will be complete at one and it will be nothing at zero. Now we can control this with an expression, which is where our expression comes in. So I'm gonna right click on input and then go to expression. And then I'm just gonna paste my expression within there. Now, if we simply hit play, it's gonna animate in it's gonna hold all the way, and then right towards the end, it's gonna animate out like so. Bing. Now we can go to edit, and we can make this as long or as short as we like. The in animation will always take one second, and the out will always take one second. So we've created this reusable, completely scalable effect really quickly and easily. You can knock this up really fast when you've got that expression to hand. And that's it, pretty much done. You could then save that import it into DaVinci Resolve and use it as a reusable effect, which I am gonna show you how to do in a moment. But if you want to be able to adjust the speed, there's a trick to be able to do that and give you a little slider as well. So I'm gonna show you that. If you're not bothered about the speed, you're happy for it always just to be one second in and one second out, then just skip ahead to the macro section that should be listed in the chapters below. But if you wanna be able to control the speed, stick around. Now, as mentioned, I'm not getting into the expression all that much, but you do need to know this. Now within this expression, you can see there's two points where we do a divided by two. That's really key. Dividing it by two, ignoring all the maths for now, basically makes the whole animation last for one second. Now we can actually make that a variable so that you can adjust that divided by to be whatever you want, which allows you to adjust the length of the animation. 
Sounds really fancy, sounds complicated. It's actually relatively easy to set up. You can either change the expression manually, which I'll do as we go, or you can simply copy the other expression that's listed down below and use that one instead. So let's take a look at that. So what we want is one of these, one of these little wheels, which allows us to scrub back and forth and changes the speed of our animation. And to do that, we're gonna use what's called a custom control. So we're gonna come on down to our transform down here on our nodes, we're going to right click and we're going to go to this option here, edit controls. And this edit control box will appear. Now this is a bit of a nightmare, honestly, to learn. So we're just going to skip through it with the basics. In the name, we're going to put anim speed with a capital A and a capital S. We're essentially just naming our control here. Now it does need to be case sensitive. So make sure you put your capital A and your capital S. We can skip ID, come on down to type. We're going to click number and then page. Page just refers to the little tabs where it's going to appear. So we want this to be on the controls tab. And then we come over to the right and we've got these options. These little scrolly wheels are called screw controls. So we're just going to use input control, screw control, and then we can leave view control and these as it is. The only last thing you want to do in the default, simply put the number two in there because that's what we want our default to be. And then simply click on OK. Now, if we were to shoot back to our tools, we now have this anim speed control at the bottom. We can just scroll it up and down. So this is what we're gonna to use to control our animation. So all we now need to do is to change our expression rather than having a two in it, just to refer to this anim speed. So we're gonna to go to modifiers. In our input, we're just gonna scroll through to find our divided by two. So I'm gonna delete my number two and then we're just gonna refer it back to that anim speed. So all you need to do, you type in the name of the node. So the node here is called transform one with a capital T. So we've got transform one dot anim speed. So the node name dot then the control name. We're gonna to go to our other number two, delete that. Transform one dot anim speed. And we're done. If we hit play, one second, one second. If we go to our tools now, we've got this anim speed. If we increase that, it actually means that animation is going to be slower. It's going to take longer. So we hit play. And now we've got a much slower animation. If we bring this down a bit, we've got a much quicker animation. Meow. And then in the modifiers, we can still go and change the animation curve to be whatever we want it to be. We still have complete control over the scale and everything else, but we can now have an additional control to control the speed. I know that probably looks really complicated and, and fiddly, but once you get used to it, once you just get used to copying that expression in, if you wanted to either do just the one second one, use the divided by two one, or you wanna use the other one, add your custom control, anim speed, and then you've got that speed control as well. It's actually relatively quick to do, and then you can save it as a preset. So it always sits on your edit page. You actually only need to do this once to create everything, and then you're good to go. So how then do you save this as a macro so it's accessible all the time whenever you want it? Well, let me show you that. So all you need to do on your nodes down here, simply right click, go to macro, and then we're going to create a macro. And this macro editor window will appear. Now the very first thing you need to do at the top here, give it a name. This is a name as it will appear once you're back on the edit page. So I'm just gonna go with something like Zoomy. Now you can see I've got transform one here. This is referring to our transform one node. And then down here, we've got our anim curves. Now for each of these, all you need to do is to open them up and then you tick the boxes of the things that you want access to once you're back editing on the edit page. So you can see here, I've got center, pivot, size, and this tallies with all of our controls that are in the inspector. So I'm gonna want access to the center, to pivot. I'm not bothered about the size because that's gonna be easy to access once you're actually on the edit page. So I'm gonna tick aspect and then probably angle. And let's tick the flips as well, why not? If you've made the anim speed, you're gonna to want to tick that, which is right at the bottom as well. Now we do want some of our controls from our anim curve. So I'm gonna expand anim curves. We've got controls here and I've got all of these options within here. Again, you can mooch around still with this box open. So I'm just gonna to go to my modifier so I can have a quick look. Source, don't need that. Input, don't need that. Curves, I do want, so we're gonna tick that. In and out, out. Lookup, that gives us our custom graph. So we're gonna tick that one. Mirror, invert, scale, and offset. Now you can tick as many as you want, but I think that should give us all the controls that we're going to need. Once you're happy, simply click on file at the top and then save as.
Now when the little window appears, all you need to do is to find a location on your PC that's really easy to access. So I've simply created a new folder on my desktop and I'm gonna create and save this zoomy.setting. So I'm just simply gonna hit save right here. Now it doesn't matter, as I say, where it is, it just needs to be easily accessible because we now just need to re-import that back into DaVinci Resolve. So to do that, we're just going to close this macro editor. We're simply going to go to the effects library, still on Fusion, expand templates, expand edit, and then click on effects. And that will give you your full list of all of your effects within here. Now open up that folder outside of DaVinci Resolve. So I've got my folder right here, just in a Windows Explorer and I've got my zoomy.setting. All we're gonna do, click, hold, drag, and we're just gonna drop it on this list here. DaVinci Resolve will have a quick think, and then all I'm gonna do is scroll right to the bottom until you get to this effects category, and within there, we should now see a zoomy, which we do. Now, you shouldn't need to restart DaVinci Resolve. Sometimes you may have to, especially on older versions, but hopefully that's come straight through. So now we can go back to the edit page and take a look at it. So back on the edit page, I'm just gonna delete this one off my timeline and we'll start completely from scratch, bring a new PNG down. In my effects library, we're gonna open up effects. Within the fusion effects area, which should be near the top, you should have your new effect within there. So I've got my zoomy. We're just gonna drop it onto this PNG, hit play, and it's gonna pop in and pop out. And we can make this as long or as short as we need it to be. If I give it a click, in the inspector, we're going to go to effects, and I've got all of my controls within there, so everything that we ticked. So I can move the center, the pivot, the aspect, the angle, to get it looking exactly as we want it. If we want to adjust the size, we actually just use the scale, we can adjust the anim speed if we want, and we can even change the easing so we can go to a different curve, or even create our own using custom and then using the custom lookup. I'm going to leave it as easing, just hit play, and boom, there we are. Job done, easy as you like. Ta-da, that's it. Hopefully that made sense. It's a great technique you can actually use to create loads of other stuff. If you want to see me create more stuff with this, you want more ideas, let me know down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll see you next time.